One particularly fond memory I have is when I first visited the Louvre last fall. Paris, at the time of the year, boasted beautiful weather, but at that day, it did even more so. The museum itself was a work of art with beautiful architecture and dazzling decorations to accommodate. However, it was the contents of the Louvre, its artworks, that made it a truly extraordinary experience. One piece in particular, I could never forget my forget the first moment I set my eyes upon its magnificence. It was the Raft Merusa by Theodore Jericho. The Raft Merusa depicts the survivors of the sinking of the French naval ship, the Merusa. The 147 survivors miraculously managed to, managed to board a raft of wooden planks where they endured days of cold, pain, and hunger. After 13 days aboard the Raft de Merusa, only 15 boatmen survived. If you would point your attention to the top right corner of the composition, you could see a man waving a piece of bright red cloth. Yes, he has found a ship passing by in the distance, and with every last drop of his strength, he is reaching out for help. I do not stand here today to give an art lecture. I am here to share my personal story. So as I scrutinized every detail of the painting for the umpteenth time, a very peculiar epiphany entered my consciousness. It was then I realized I was no longer in the Louvre. Instead, I was aboard the Raft de Merusa, holding onto the rotting planks for dear life, struggling against the crashing waves, the stench of salt water overpowering my psyche. The wretched wails of the men clashed with the howling of the storm, the howling of the storm, the hellish cacophony overpowering my senses. The madness was irresistible, and I felt myself submitting to fear and despair. But then, in the corner of my eye, I also saw a glimpse of the piece of the bright red cloth, in vivid colors, beating against the wind. Then, gradually, slowly, my heart filled up with yet another alien feeling. Hope. Maybe the ship will notice us. Maybe we can make it back alive. Maybe we can... Hey, Kevin! Then I heard my brother call my name. I broke out of my trance and was back at the gallery of the Louvre, not a drop of salt water on my skin. I have been staring at the painting for 10 minutes straight. I've been so immersed in the painting that my consciousness was transported into a different plane. It was at that moment it seemed like the impossible has been achieved. I have transcended the chains of time and space. It is relatively easy to think we are free beings, but in reality we are not. We are constantly bound by these invisible chains that restrict our potential with every action. These chains come in all shapes and sizes, but perhaps the most restricting among them all is time and space. I cannot immediately fly back to my home country to see the cherry blossoms blooming spring. I cannot travel back in time to a point in history to witness a monumental moment unfold before my very eyes. Of course I can't. Nobody can. But what if we can? What if we could break these chains, accomplish what we previously thought we were inherently incapable of? Here, I'd like to present an answer to the question. We can. We can with art. The Raft de Merusa took me soaring through time and space on a journey that has not faded even the slightest in my mind to this day. Ever since that moment, I was entirely convinced that art was capable of the most astonishing things. I have consumed countless of pieces of art in my life, but this was the first moment I had such a rivet riveting reaction to its presence. But then came my second revelation. It was actually remarkably simple to break these chains and transcend time and space. I just have never noticed it before. Reading a book is an example that immediately comes to my mind. When we have our nose buried deep within the pages of The Great Gatsby, we're no longer underneath the covers holding a flashlight, but we are at the great American mansions in the roaring 20s with music in the air and cocktails in our hands. When uh, watching a movie is another way art transcends. When watching 
Doctor Strangelove, for instance, we're no longer in our cinema seats munching on caramel popcorn, but at the war room alongside military officials at the intensity of the Cold War. It is only when we close the book, or when the credits roll, our journey ends and we are back where we left off. Scientists have been trying to master the enigmas of time and space for decades. From quantum physics to the theory of everything, there have been countless attempts to uncover the hidden secrets of our universe. But I was never a science type of person, and I would like to take a much different approach. Can art be the omniscient, omnipotent, all-encompassing force that perpetuates our axis of existence? Could it be the key to unlimited potential and everything we have ever dreamt of? Is it a power so great that it can transcend even time and space? My verdict, yes, yes it is. So next time you are before art, be absorbed in it, invest every piece of your mind into it, and I promise the experience will be astonishing. Thank you.